the product. Now, don't forget, today is our Thanksgiving. We have two Thanksgivings. We have one with our Kindes family. We celebrate with them. Then the General Church Thanksgiving is also today. In a few minutes, I just want us to understand the concept, the reason why Jesus died, and what by his death he brought to us. Because a lot of us can be celebrating Easter, believing that Easter is all about eating rice, you know, uh, there's a chicken meat you have to eat. Some even believe that it's a time to wear a new dress and things like that. Or some see it as a festive season or an holiday season. He did not just die because he came to die. He just wanted to die. No, his death was for a purpose. So my message is put in three categories. Number one, I will show you the state that man was before Jesus came. Number two, I will show you why he decided, it was decided for him to die for, for man. Then number three, I will show you what his death brought. You know, it is not going to be proper if you don't understand your state. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I have to put this here so that we all will know that I also have the kind of phone you have. When you are in church, you don't put your phone on. You put it on vibration. You don't ping with your phone, you know. When you are in church, it's a time to be with God, to listen to God. So, like I've just done, you can put your phone in silence and just put it down. Whoever is calling you at this particular time does not love you. You can't hear God and man at the same time. Let's look at the state of man before Jesus came. Let's start with Psalm 51 and verse 5. Psalm 51 verse 5, the first scriptural passage. We all are going to rise up. We are going to read together this one verse in honor of God's word. Then we'll sit down. Psalm 51 and verse 5. Can we all rise on our feet? Thank you. Let's be on our feet. Let's be on our feet. Now, let's have it from the NIV version, please. Can we have from the NIV version? Let's be on our feet in honor of God's word. We always rise up to read the first Bible passage. And we'll take it together after the count of three. One, two, and three. Let's go. Surely, I was sinful at birth. Sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Now look at the scripture. Surely I was sinful at death. Sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Father, we ask for deep understanding, deep revelation. Let our hearts be open to hear you this morning, so afternoon, and let us go home with at least a message. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Let's be seated in his presence. Now, if you look at this Psalm 51 verse 5 that we read, the state of man before Jesus came, hear me, every living being, human, was born into sin. Now, it was not so from the beginning. When God created man, man was perfect. Man was what? Perfect. Man was in a perfect state. In fact, it was called an error, a dispensation of conscience. A time where a uh, man's conscience taught man what to do, right or wrong. And listen, Adam and Eve were the first humans created. So they represented the generation of humans. They were representing us. Adam was our uh, representative as a then. Everything he did then, he did for us. So when God said to Adam and uh, Eve, he said to Adam, do not eat from the middle of the tree at the tree at the middle of the garden. God said it not because the tree was bad. God said it because he wanted to test man. To see if man will live in obedience to God. Praise the Lord. He wanted to test man. And man, you know, you know we have the male man, we have the female man. That's Eve was talked to by the devil. Please separate those two children for me was talked to by the devil, and they decided to disobey God. Hear me. When Adam and Eve took the fruit, they disobeyed God on our behalf. Now, and God had it in mind that man will be given the tree of, from the tree of life so that man will eat from that fruit and never die again. 
But because they decided to obey God, hear me, they brought the curse of death upon us. So man started to die. So from then, that's what Sam was quoting. Everyone born was born into what? Into sin. That's why nobody will say, I got born again in my mother's womb. You know, I used to hear some pastors speak on the internet. They would say they got their calling from their mother's womb. That's a lie. Anyone that will work for God must first pass through one thing. What's that? Salvation call. Am I communicating? So, everyone born was born into sin. Now, that's why we need to be born again. Now, and you know what Nicodemus said to Jesus? Do I need to go back to my mother's womb to be born again? He said, no. You don't need to go through that long process. But I just want to show you the state that man was before Jesus came to die. Man was born into sin. So, everyone born is a sinner. Everyone born is a sinner. You know why I'm saying this? So that you will not be saying, I don't need to give my life to Jesus. I was born by a pastor. No, 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 no. Even if it's a pastor that gave birth to you, you are a sinner. Every man is born in iniquity. Do you hear me? That's why, hear me. Let's look at this one again. In John 14, 30. After Adam and Eve disobeyed God, you know what they did? They handed over the lordship of the earth to the devil. So the devil became the prince of this world. Show me. John chapter 14 and verse 30. John chapter 14 and verse 30. The devil became the prince of this world. Look at this. Jesus was speaking here. He said, I will not speak with you much longer. Look at this. For the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold on me. Who was he referring to? He was referring to Satan. So, by the disobedience of Adam, the world that was given to man was handed over to Satan. So, into source, Atani di omo. Uh, I mean, uh, 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 what do you call it? The prince of this art. So, from that day, the devil became the controller of the art. He determined when people die. He determined the evil things that happen. That's why you begin to see. My son asked me uh, a question. He said, sir, uh, dad, daddy, why, why? You know, was asking for the, his questions. Most times are always very funny. That, daddy, did God create mosquito from the beginning? From Genesis to be eating man? So I had to let him know it was when the devil became the prince of the world that he turned the beautiful things that God created against man. Now, can you just imagine if your enemy becomes the boss where you work? What do you think he will be doing? He will be bringing out policies that will go against you. So when the devil became the prince of the earth, he started turning all the beautiful things against man. Because he hated man because man is the image of God. I'm showing you the state that man was before Jesus came. So before Jesus came, the devil was in control. Before Jesus came, every man was under his subjection. That was the state of man. Understand it. So that you understand uh, Easter. Then after that, hear me, there was meeting in heaven. Now, somebody needs to come to the earth that, that will become another Adam. Let's go to the book of Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5 from verse 18 to verse 19. Romans chapter 5 from verse 18. Another man needed to come to go through the same process so that the man will be tested. You know, so that the man will pass the test of obedience. So that the man will now become the deliverer of the of he and the entire human race. Am I waiting for the scriptures? Matthew Romans chapter 5. I'm waiting from verse 18 to verse 19. Romans 5, 18 to verse 19. Waiting for you. I want everybody to see it so that you will have on the understanding why you and I should appreciate what Jesus did. Now look at this. He said, consequently, just as the result of trespass was condemnation. For, for all men so also the result of what one act of righteousness was justification that brings life for all men so they needed one to come show me verse 19 yes thank you 
For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners. Can you see what I said? So also, through the obedience of one man, the many will be made righteous. Now, pay attention to this reading. For just as the, through the disobedience of one man, many were already made sinners. Now, if you look at downward, you see that it was not said already made righteous. No, everybody is not righteous because Jesus died. Now, look at it. He said, by the obedience of the one man, many will be made. There is a choice to it. Many will be made. Who are those that will be made? Those that accept Jesus. So, let me tell you the story before I come to that point. Why did he come to die? Another one, he had to come and represent entire human race. Because Adam sold us all, so we needed another representative. So Jesus came. He was born the way you and I were born. Now, and look at, people don't understand what happened in Matthew 4. Matthew 4, it's exactly what happened in Genesis 3. Now, in, Ma in Genesis 3, you know, there was this fruit at the middle of the garden. In Matthew 4, Jesus was led to the wilderness. He fasted and prayed for 40 days and 40 nights. And the devil came to meet him in the wilderness. And instantly the devil said to him, uh -uh, Look at this stone now. Why, need, why not turn it into bread? You know what he wanted to do? He wanted Jesus to also fall where Adam fell. But Jesus understood his mission. Why? He knew that he was carrying me and you inside of him. He wanted us to be delivered. He knew that if he obeyed the devil, he would become like the first Adam. So he insisted, man shall not live our bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of the father. The devil did not stop. The devil came again and, and now capitalized to, now to use ignorance. He said, why not jump from this place? Did he not say he would give his angels charge over you? He wanted Jesus to die so that the battle will end. Jesus said to him, do not tempt the Lord your God. You know, a repetition of what happened in Genesis chapter 3. Then he came again the third time. He said, okay, you know this time around, look at the entire world. You know it belongs to me. You know it belongs to me. Jesus said, I know you are the prince of this world. You took it from Adam. Bow to me. He didn't want a battle. He didn't want Jesus to pay the price and collect it easily. He said, just bow. Submit to me and I will give it to you. You know why? The devil wanted to continue to be in control. If somebody asks you, why did Jesus come to die? He came to die as the price for Adam's mistake that put us into captivity. Am I communicating? So, by his righteousness, a new generation was to be raised. Understand why he died. I was watching some, a woman speaking on, on the internet. He said, God is wicked. Why will he allow his son to go through that punishment, go to the cross and die? He said, as a wicked God, I will not serve him again. And I look at him, I shook my head. A price is required. Can I tell you this truth? There is nothing in this life you want that does not have a price. Because there is nothing in this life that is free. Nothing. You want to live in healthy? Free. It's not free. You pay the price. A pastor friend was asking me on Friday night. He said, Pastor, I look at mama. Look at mama's weight now. I look at you too. You are, are you people sick or what? Why are you? I said, look at, we are living the life. Because we are growing. I'm going to be 50 very soon. Is it next year? Wow. I didn't know. <laughs> So I was telling I said, if you see me on the treadmill, I do 350 in the morning, 350 at night. My wife does three, uh, 500 in the morning, 500 every night. Say, wow. I said, why? We are slimming down in order to live long. Because Pastor Matthew said, you will never see a fat old man. Nothing is free. Let me tell your neighbor, nothing is free. So, the price needed for our redemption is what I'm telling you. That's why, if you look, let, let, let's go deeper. I'm still showing you more scriptures. We are looking at why he just had to die. Can I go on? In Philippians, 
Labu Sataya. Chapter 2, from verse 8 to verse 11. Philippians chapter 2, 8 to verse 11. We are still looking at the price. The Bible says, I'm being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death. Even death on the cross. Can you see? He said, I, his death on the cross was not just because he wanted to die. He was paying a price. The devil did not want to lose the heart to Jesus. The devil wanted control of the heart. He wanted to remain the prince of this world. So he did everything. Jesus said, I will make myself available. Do everything you can. As long as I don't betray God, I win. You know, the first Adam lost it by disobeying God. So the devil wants Jesus to also lose it. That's why he, he did everything. Look at what he went through on the cross. He didn't say any bad thing. The, the worst that he said was, my, my Lord, my God, why have thou forsaken me? He didn't deny the Lord. Look at when he was in Gethsemane. He, he was looking at what he was going to go through. And the Bible says, he said, if it is possible for this cup to pass away, he remembered, no, it mustn't pass. Because I have a generation to save. I have a people to bring into this kingdom, a new kingdom to establish. He said, not my will, Lord, but let your will be done. So while they were beating him, you know what they were looking for? For him to say, I don't want to do again. Because he said, my father gave me the right to lay down my life and to take it back. I can decide to say, I'm no longer interested. I'm showing you the price. So he continued. They beat him. They put crown of thorns on him. They took him to Golgotha. They nailed him to the cross. They waited and waited. This man... Jesus did not deny the faith. Then eventually somebody, you better kill this man. That was when they went to pierce him beside. And his last words were, was what? It is finished. Unto thy hand, Lord, I commit my spirit. That was when the devil knew that his era ended. But I will tell you what so many people don't know today. So what's the price? The price was obedience unto death. Let me take you to the third part of our message now. Listen. Why did he die? I will just show you three out of all. So many. Number one, he died to reconcile us to God. Because man being born of sin, God cannot behold sin. So there should be a, a, a gift of righteousness. That's what we call gift of righteousness. Look up, everybody. That's why the moment you come to Jesus, there's a gift of righteousness come, that covers you, that can make the Holy Spirit to come into your heart. Jesus died to reconcile us. Man was disconnected by the disobedience of Adam. But Jesus' death brought us back to God. That's why, hear me. In Christ, he's not just our God. He's our father. That reconciliation made us his children. Let's look at scriptures. Let's look at scriptures. There's no time, but I'm just going to show you. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 18 and 19. Oh, I'm not yet. Okay, yes, that's where I am. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 and 9. Thank you. And, sorry, all this is from God. Who did what? Who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19. He reconciled us to himself through Christ. So the death of Jesus had made me reconciled to God. Tell your neighbor, I'm not an enemy of God yet. I'm, I have been reconciled back to him. Oh, King Shota Olorumo. Oh, King Shota Olorumo. Oh, King Sherusin Olorun. You have been reconciled. Show me verse 19. You've been reconciled back to God. 
and this relationship that you have by salvation. Let's go on. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. Not counting man's sins against them. Can you see? And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. So he died to reconcile us. That's why I always tell people, no matter what you have done in the past, the moment you give your life to Jesus Christ, that record of sin is gone. That's why I always tell Christians, you know, some Christians still believe when they are suffering, they say, ah, ah, I am suffering because of the punishment of what I did in, the, in my days of unbelief. That's from the devil. It's not for you. Don't bring back what God has paid for. Hello? I know the devil wants to do a mind game. He wants to come to you, show you your past, and make you feel that is the reason why your present is like this. But when it comes like this, rebuke him and say, get out, get lost. Satan, it's just like when somebody pays for you to eat somewhere. And while you are seated, they come to you and say, well, who told you to be here? All you need to do is to what? Show them the ticket. This is my ticket. Once they see the ticket, what will happen? They will go back. You are no longer an enemy of God. Who are you? Say, I'm a child of God. I didn't hear you. Say it boldly. Listen, I wrote here, sin he does from, uh, from him. Our sinfulness made him far from us. The Holy Spirit could not dwell in us because of our sins of the past. Our sin ma made uh, us irritate him. Now we are members of his family. We have him as our father. We are his children. Now the Holy Ghost can dwell in us. That's why he died. You have the Holy Spirit in you. So anytime the devil wants to remind you of a sinful past, tell him I'm now in Christ. I'm a new creation. I'm born again. But before it was not so. That's why, if you look at the Old Testament, you see that some people were cursed even to generations. Look at the curse that David placed upon Joab. He said, in your generation, there will always be beggar. But do you know what we enjoy today? The blood of Jesus is stronger than any kind of blood. So the moment you are born again, whatsoever kind of thing flowing in your generation, all you just need to do is, I am new. I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation. Show me 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. I'm a new creation. I'm new. I didn't exist before. Let's read together after the count of three. One, two, and three. Let's go. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, who is he? He's a new creation. What happened again? The old has gone and the new has come. That's what he has come to do. The old gone. It will lead me to a story of a man. The story that uh, Baba Alimi of Benu in Christ told us in a meeting that I attended. He told us the meeting of John. He said the man's name is John. He's a pipe smoker. You know this people that smokes the pipe. Their own cigarette is not like this. Their own is like this. This man got to church. They led him to Christ. He said he's ready to be born again. And they now told him for his salvation to be complete, he has to be baptized. The man said, no problem. So on the day of his baptism, he came with his pipe. Lo he loaded it so well and was just smoking it. Ah! The pastor said, they asked him, what is going on? He said, you told me that my salvation is not complete until I'm baptized. Let's go for baptism. And he was smoking. Smoking and blowing to the air. Smoking and blowing to the air. Thank God that the pastor was wise enough not to stop him. So as the pastor said, no problem, let's go. They got to the river. He put the things down. He smoked it for some time again. Do it, do it very well and put it down. And as they took him into the sea, they said, you are baptized today in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As they brought him out, he came out and was going. And the pastor said, Brother John, you've forgotten your pipe. He said, me? I am not the owner. Uh-uh. Pastor said, what do you mean? He said, the man that owns it was buried inside the sea. This one that came up is a new John. And he was dancing 
and it was going. If you are born again, say, my past is gone. I didn't hear you. Who paid for it? Jesus. If you are born again, there is no family curse. Anywhere that should hold you. If the devil wants to bring it, tell him, remind him. Do you know that it is possible for a born again Christian to still experience family curse? Yes. If they don't know they are right. I've told you my story before. The first time I was so bought a flight in my life. Traveling, I was going to Johannesburg in South Africa. Now, my ticket was paid for. The, my host just told me, you are ministering in our convention and things like that. I was glad. I got my visa, you know, I packed my bags and I got into the plane. They checked me at the airport or the check-in and I got into the plane. And I sat down quietly. They didn't tell me anything about the flight. They didn't tell me any package with my ticket. I sat quietly. It was a night flight. We left the plane, lip, was lifted from Nigeria around 9 p.m. And where I sat quietly, a young man was passing. And he was asking people questions. He got to me. He said, water or juice? If they ask you water or juice, will you pick water? <laughs> ah. I said, anyone. But juice is okay. So he came, brought small in a cup and gave me. And I was quietly sipping it. Until I got to Johannesburg, they announced that the plane is landed, it was going to land. We landed. When we now got to the house, my host now said, Pastor, did you enjoy the flight? So I started asking, what is there to enjoy in the flight? I sat down. Somebody asked me, do you care for juice or water? He said, Pastor, when we paid for the flight, the ticket covers all your convenience. Anything you want that they have on the plane, you can ask for. I see you. I didn't know. You didn't educate me. You didn't let me know. So I prepared for my return. That's why I'm talking to those of you that are born again now. Understand that the blood of Jesus took away that family curse away. Begin to cross the lines that your parents could not cross. I didn't hear your amen. Begin to do the exploits that your parents could not do. Whatsoever negative thing associated with your family that you see and you are quiet about and is happening in your life, I command it to end now in the name of Jesus. You know why I'm telling you this? To show you to, you have the right to ask for what you have paid for that was not delivered to you. So, as the pilot announced, we are now 3,000 feet above sea level. Please enjoy your flight. A man was passing. And I called him, excuse me, sir. I did like this. And he came. He said, please, can I have, I said, can I have a bottle of, of water? I just wanted to test it. He said, sure. As he collected the water, I didn't want water. I put it under my seat. So he was going, I said, excuse me, please, I don't know. Do you have any soft drink? He said, what brand do you want? I said, can I have Coke? He said, sure. He went and brought a canned Coke. And you know, there are Coke in the, uh, on plane. It's very small. I quickly opened it. I finished it. As he was going again, I said, please come. Can I have another one? He said, sure. He brought it. I quickly opened it and drank it. He was going again. I said, please, can I have another one? He said, sure. I said, please, please wait. Make it Schweppes. I collected nine. Because I told myself, you cheated me when I was coming. This time around. You know what I was doing? I was just putting them in my pocket. I was asking them. I had to pity them. That was why I stopped at nine. Because I was feeling her. Ha. Because right beside me, I saw somebody ask for wine. And they told him he's alcoholic. May I don't take alcohol. And they brought it for him. Eh. Do you know that the same thing? So many of you do not know that Jesus has paid for your past. You are still thinking that the reason why you are where you are is because of your past. You don't have a past again. What you have now is future in Christ. I'm a new creation. Say he has paid for my past. 
Anytime the devil brings to you the guilt of your past mistakes, don't let it weigh you down. Because once in a while, the devil will bring it to weigh you down, to create fear in your mind. Don't let it weigh you down. Your past has been paid for. And it's gone forever. Say gone forever. I didn't hear you clearly. You can make it better. Another thing he paid for, that I want you to also listen. Don't forget number one is reconciliation. You are reconciled back to God. Number two, he, he redeemed you. I wrote it here. Redemption from the dominion of darkness. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. Redemption from the dominion of dark, darkness. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. I want us to see it. That's another thing he, his blood paid for. This is what I told you here. Open your eyes very well. Let's read together. One, two, three, and let's go. For he has what? Rescued us from the dominion. Now look at the word dominion. You may not understand until you understand what the word they call the domain. Now don't forget, the devil took the world from Jesus, I mean from Adam, and became what? Prince of the world. Now, Jesus has rescued us from the dominion of darkness, the domain of the devil, and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves. So for me and for you that are born again, the devil is no longer the prince of this world. The devil is the prince of the world to as many who are not born again. And you know, your prince can determine what happens in your life. But to those of us who are born again, the devil is no longer the prince over us. Who is the prince over us? Jesus. We are in his kingdom. That's why when I sing, I am glad I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my God. I am glad I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I, I sing it with understanding. Only Jesus can determine what happens in my life, not the devil. So, whenever people are talking about the devil as being so powerful, always remember that you are different. Because there are so many Christians that still believe that, ah, ah, it should like better, Konigbala. So many Christians will still confirm it. Ah, Ogunle Babami, Ule Majakash, Kaliba, Bede Yenshi. So whenever they have any good thing they want to do, the first thing they think about is darkness. You don't understand who you are. Sir, look up. Let me use this illustration to make you understand clearly. The American embassy in Nigeria does not care about the power, the power or the failure of Naira. Why? The embassy in Nigeria does not spend Naira. The embassy in Nigeria does not determine the budget on Naira. They determine their budget on what? Their own currency. Nigerian embassy in America has no business with the dollars. If not that we have corrupt leaders. Everything in our embassy in America should be done in the name of Naira. Now, you are in this world. You are not of this world. In this world that you are in, Jesus is your own prince. Whatsoever he cannot do will not happen in your life. That's why, no matter what the case is, turn to your prince now. The devil has lost his grip because you are no longer under the devil's dominion. Stop acting like the devil is in control. You want to so, imagine, imagine, imagine Christian. A young lady in our church wanted to get married, and the mom called her. Tell your pastor that prophecy came out that on your wedding day, the people of darkness are once to operate, and their means of operation is that they want to use any black thing you use against you. It does against her. So no black thing must be on you. 
when she told me, said, Daddy, what's up me? Oh, do do cock on, who go to Silla, Lodger, Tomba, my she, wedding, Tori, I want milk, eh, and oh, do do not have money in rolling in call. I buy anything to see my lame by. And to what things are you? I only know I eat by one more or mention it. You know, people are getting clearer with the truth now. And no, no, my dear, I'm church. I'm in our church. Money, oh, we appreciate it until your Lord don't find. But let me even ask us: Is it even God that give you the health? That's for another time. That's for another time. When we get to a point, we will teach you all those things. Now, what am I saying today? The devil is no longer in control. So I told this my sister, daughters in church. I said, Auntie, what about your hair? Honey, sir, I don't understand. Though. I said, Sister, please forget about whatever they have told you. Let's do your wedding. What kind of wedding do you want? We, we did, it was a glorious wedding. And God is still good to them till tomorrow. The devil is no longer in control of your life. For a born again Christian, the devil's control will be to the point that you allow him. Say here. Let's take the last one. We have Thanksgiving. Number third reason why he died. He defeated the devil and obtained a name for us that by his name we will demonstrate our victory over Satan. Let me come again. He defeated the devil and obtained a name for us. That by his name, we will demonstrate our victory over Satan. Philippians 2, 8 to verse to 11. Shall I come again? Hallelujah. Play that song for me. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Me free. Uh -huh. Give me that scripture I'm waiting for you. He has lost his grip. Oh. He has broken. Yes. I love that choir. Jesus. Let's take it again one more time. Hallelujah. Join the choir if you know the song. Yes, hallelujah. Broken. Jesus. Thank you. Now look at this. And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death. Even death on the cross. Move to the next verse. He obtained a name. I want to show you that he obtained that name for us. I'm waiting for you. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and did what? And gave him the name that is above every name. He purposely obtained that name for us. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that's above every name. Yes? Next verse. Next verse. That at the name of Jesus. Now, listen. He, he will not be the one to mention his name. That's why he died. For you to know how powerful names are. Now, look up. Hold on with this scripture for me. I, I've told you this story before. Earlier this year, I was driving to drop my daughter at uh, Lee City University. She said she had an exam. So that day, I just, okay, let me drop you. Then I'll turn to the office. 
as I was about negotiating, the Federal Road Safety guys just stood in front of me, park. So I peeped. What's the problem? They said I should come down. Any problem? They said I should just come down. So I parked and got down. He said, come and check your plate number. I went to check. He said, can you please tell us what you see? I said, I can't see it. He said, so you can't see? I said, can't see. He said, it's an offense. Is it that I can't see it that it's an offense or what? <laughs> I said, no. The thing has faded. Oh. I said, then what? Why is that my problem? Am I the one that printed it? He said, it's a law in Nigeria. Once you are, your plate number is faded, there's nothing we can do. You have to be fined. I said, okay. I'm sorry. I'm hearing it for the very first time. Can I go? He said, no. <sighs> Give us your driver's license. I brought the temporary one they gave me. Since 2022, they have registered. It was just last week they told me that all the people on the system, when I registered, have traveled out. So, <laughs> so they have not entered it. I should wait until it still come. So since 2022, they said temporary. I said, is, is it my fault that it is temporary? They said, we, now that it is temporary, we have to take your car to our office. I said, why? They said, well, the fine for plate number that is that's faded is 10,000. <laughs> 10,000 is not my problem. I counted 10,000. Let me pay. They said, no, you have to go and pay at the bank. Then you come and take your car from the office. So I tried begging, they refused. I insisted. I tried to now say, okay, let me use force. They, they refused. While I was, they were refusing and saying, this car must get to the office. My three children were in the car. I just remember that. Wait. I belong to a group in America that one of the members of the group is the overall head of road safety. And during my birthday, he called me to say the group head said they should greet me for my birthday. And sir, in case you have any problem with any road safety official, please call me. I've not met him in person. He said, please save my number. So that morning, I said, okay, let's see. So I called his number. I described myself. I said, Pastor Prince, I said, yes, you remember me? I said, this is my situation. He said, yes, it's true. It's a law in Nigeria now. But you know what you would do? Give the man the number, your phone. So I got to him. Please, who is your head here? They said I should sit, speak to the superior. The man came. He said, I'm the superior here. I said, somebody wants to speak to him. He said, no, I don't have the, the right to give him phone. That it's not his job to collect my phone. Except I tell him the unit where they are calling him from. So I asked the man, sir, what unit? He said, tell him Lugbe unit in Abuja. So I said, Lugbe unit. He said, ah, that's our head office. I was just hearing, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To show you how powerful names are. He gave me my phone. He said, I am asked to let you go. My, my boss said, you are his pastor and that I should bring the plate number to your office. So gallantly, as the pastor of the real safety man I've never met in my life. <laughs> I entered my car. The man brought the plate number to my office by himself. They are superior. He too now says, sir, I didn't know you are a pastor. He said, in case of any time you have any issue with any of our people, this is my name, sir. Sir, names work in the realm of the spirit, here on earth, and under the earth. That's why Jesus was, he was given that name, and he obtained that name by his death for us. That's why the Bible says, at the mention, show us that scripture, we are not yet true, at the mentioning of his name. You know, that's why I told you here, it is wrong for a Christian to be saying, Olorun Baba Lola. Baba Lola did not die for you. Olorun Pastor Prince, we, Pastor Prince, we cannot die. I can't die. If they give me a chance to die for you, I won't die for you. 
Because this life is one. Abi, Abi, can you die for me? You can't die for me now. Why should I die for you? For you to know that you can't die for anybody, you will be burying your parents and you are crying. And after 30 minutes, you won't be eating rice and you are dancing and they are spraying you money. What's the essence of dancing and spraying money? So don't try to die for anybody. Only Jesus can die for you. That's why I told you three weeks ago. Don't forget. Don't be saying, oh Lord, no, no, no. It is only his name. Show us, show us. That at the name of Jesus, how many knees? Every. As long as it has knees. Should bow where? In heaven. Where? On that. Where again? Under the earth. So it means if your case is in heaven, the name of Jesus will set to it. If it's on earth, the name of Jesus. If it's under the earth, the name of Jesus. So don't forget the third reason why he died. He defeated the devil and obtained a name for us. That by his name, we will demonstrate our victory over Satan. And that's what Apostle John saw in 1 John 5, 4. Show me quickly. There's no time. 1 John 5, 4. That was what Apostle John saw. And look at it. He said, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is a victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Our faith in what? In the name of Jesus. Let me take one man with clothes. The last thing he died to do, he died to become a living high priest for us. A living high priest for us. What's the job of a priest? A priest is an intercessor. He stands in the gap. That's why the Bible says, as Jesus rose, he met Mary. He said, I go to my father, your father. Now, where did he go? He went to the right hand of God. That's where he is now. What is he doing at the right hand of God? Speaking for you and me. So that when the devil is accusing you, Jesus is there. His intercession is stronger than the devil's accusation. You know why so many Christians suffer? They suffer because of ignorance. They don't know what is in the salvation package. That's why if somebody say, I'm taking your name, Pastor, I will take your name to Jebu, I will take your name to, to Bini, I will take your name to Asaba to go and write it down in the flight of a shrine. I don't used to be afraid. All the places you are mentioning, they are not. Where my own Jesus is, is up there in heaven. All I just need to do is Jesus, see you. Do you now understand the products? Reconciliation? Deliverance from the domain of darkness. Obtain the name for you. And now he's seated at the right hand of God. You have a living priest. My priest is not dead. He's living. Always speaking for me. That's where my courage comes from. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Men have threatened me before. I'm not afraid. Severally. We went for a crusade at the Deacon Market. At the first day of the crusade, the Lord told me that I should make the, the, the announcement. So I announced that God said there are some boys here. Their masters have chained them. They are using their destiny for business. God said I should come tomorrow and liberate those boys from the dominion of their boss over them. Tomorrow, so all the almost shares, the Lord said, I shall anoint you tomorrow. That night, the forces in the market visited me. They came in a trance and they said, 
do I want to come tomorrow? <laughs> hey. They came with threat. We will deal with you. I said, me? The trance went off. I jumped up. I began to pray. The second day when I got to the Edicle market, the first thing I said, hey, and know. When I lifted up the oil to anoint the people, I was shocked. The chief imam of the mosque ran out of the mosque and brought his head for me to anoint him. Ah! Chief imam! I didn't hear your voice. Don't beat any drum. Don't worry. Ah, Obani Jesus. Obani Jesus. Ah, Moti son no sin be kun e shemi. Let's test their voice. Safoni foji ku ati. Technical, give them sound. Ati ro mi pi pe ko si re ti fun mi mo Hold on with the drums I'm coming I'm coming Sorry mo je bi bo bo esun ta ko In Freke's bass I didn't hear it Again start again Mo ti son no sin u igbe kun e se mi I want to hear In Freke's bass Sa funi foji ku wa ti gbagbe mi E go so okay Hati ro mi pe pe ko si re ti fun mi mo Oh sorry mo je bi gogo esun ta kan mo mi Ah jugba ile mi ta mo do bi ni ra lati gba mo ti gba Jesu Ati ra mi pada ati san gbe se mi ni pa e je je so pe Jesus Christ is a victory Hallelujah! Praise the Lord who set me free. Hallelujah! Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Thank you. Try so please. Let's clap for them. They tried. Now listen, if you are not born again, look at what you are missing. What's number one? You are not reconciled with, to God. If you are not born again, you are living as an enemy of the cross, an enemy of God. What's number two? You are not redeemed from the dominion of darkness if you are not born again. Eshushi mama jekabali elori. You know, because I'm, I, 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 am, I am born again, I'm redeemed from the dominion of darkness, I don't fear terrible dreams. I have dreamt before where I was locked inside a coffin. And the person told me in 12 years' time it will happen. And that 12 years was my 40, for, when I was, I, I clocked 42. I woke up from that dream. You know what I did? I just did like this. I clapped. I said that, that drama was very, very accurate. The person you pick looked like me. Ah! In fact, you acted that film well. That person looked like me, but it can never be me. I'm going to be 50 next year. Cherry K drama won't fail. If you are not yet born again, you are missing a lot. If you are not born again, you don't have a priest up there interceding for you. So if you are, if you are born again, hold on to your salvation the Lord will strengthen you. You will not fall back. Amen. In Jesus' name. And if you are not yet born again, let me give you this opportunity today to give your life to Jesus. 
Just say this after me wherever you are. Lord Jesus, I accept you today as my personal Lord and Savior. Forgive my sins. Cleanse my name from the book of death. Write it in the book of life. Come into my heart. Rule and reign. I promise to live according to your precepts. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. And after the service, if you have made this confession, come see me. I will give you a counselor. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. As I invite Brother G to tell us what is next. I think we are having Thanksgiving now. Where is Brother Gabriel? We are having